अनरेबल जस्टिस के एम जोसेफ जज सुप्रीम कोर्ट ऑफ इंडिया अनरेबल जस्टिस अजय रस्तोगी जज सुप्रीम कोर्ट ऑफ इंडिया अनरेबल जस्टिस वी रामस्वामी जज सुप्रीम कोर्ट ऑफ इंडिया जस्टिस श्री आर वेंकट रमणी लर्नड एटर्नी जनरल ऑफ इंडिया अनरेबल जजेस ऑफ द सुप्रीम कोर्ट ऑफ इंडिया मैडम एन सी जोसेफ मैडम मधुरी करस्तोगी मिसेस मैडम सरस्वती प्रेजेंट लॉ ऑफिसर्स प्रेसिडेंट ऑफ एस सी बी ए श्री आदिश अग्रवाल ऑफिस बियर्स ऑफ एस सी बी ए श्री मनोज मिश्रा प्रेसिडेंट स्कोरा ऑफिस बियर्स ऑफ स्कोरा श्री पी एच पारिक हु इज प्रेजेंट हि एंड इज द लॉन्गेस्ट टाइम प्रेसिडेंट ऑफ दिस बार officials of supreme court administration guests from press seniors my colleagues ladies and gentlemen today is a very unique day when i on behalf of the president and members of scba extend a warm welcome to each one of you on the dais and off the dais today is very very uniquely important besides being the last day before vacations we all are eagerly awaiting to unwind after the hectic sessions of after october today also is remarkable which is not a coincidence in the morning the newly elected scba executive committee took over charge from the outgoing committee that was the first event the second event was taking of oath of the newly appointed judges justice misra and honorable justice our jewel of the bar Vishwanathan. In fact, popularly known as VC till then. Now you are Justice Vishwanath, and we'll. I, I hope you will be here only, and always will treat you as part of this. For the first time, the third event today is the Honorable Chief Justice of India had three ceremonial benches, and the. last which is not a coincidence but because of the vacation and swing vacations three illustrious judges for whom we have organized these functions will be showing our gratitude and will recount the enlightenment given by them and the lessons learned from them and their retirement is due on 17th of june 18th of june and 30th of june but by a coincidence all of them are giving farewell today since this is the first available opportunity to the newly constituted executive committee of the scba we would like to show our gratitude to our friends who have tirelessly worked in during the elections and have elected us to form this new executive committee it is only the candidate who win is the recognized face in the crowd but behind them the supporters who go unnoticed they put in their hard work the other contestants they are also recognized to some extent they are supporters the voters the election committee and the 
innumerable volunteers who work for the elections without any interest, totally selflessly, we thank them and they all are present here, I can see, and we want to show our gratitude to all of them. In fact, the participants of the elections in SCBA have conducted themselves remarkably as has been uh, as is shown from the smooth elections proceedings which came to be over only this morning when the newly constituted executive committee took over during the elections i had the opportunity to interact with various members of different sections of the fraternity and could feel the mind and expectations from the bar leaders and the Supreme Court administration, and particularly by the visionary Honorable Chief Justice Dr. D. Y. Chandrachud. I would like to share some of the feedback which may be considered by all stakeholders, primarily the Honorable Chief Justice. The young and energetic lawyers particularly the first generation lawyers who are practicing here, feel that there should be initiatives for continuing professional education on both ethics and advocacy. The lawyers who are regular practitioners before the Supreme Court and have great experience and mostly in their free time spend their time in the library and lounge, feel that they can be better utilized for contributing to the cause of mediation and assisting the court in various ways where their contributions can be utilized to ease out the rush. And I met them, many of them, in fact, do not go to any other court. After their free time, they sit, they read, update themselves, and they can be great capacity to be utilized for various professional purposes, which will benefit them as well as the litigants. The other sections I met was the lady lawyers. Now there is a great increase in number of women lawyers practicing in the bar, and the facilities for them is totally inadequate. Some of the small instances I came across during the elections is the very small ladies' bar room, which I think with minor tweaking can be ex expanded, which can be seen. And because there are the other rooms which are unused, if the small wall can be broken and it can be expanded. That's their concern. Now the Supreme Court, the other group of lawyers who are techno savvy, they say that now the Supreme Court is not only for Delhi or is physically present in Delhi because of the initiative of the Honorable Chief Justice. It is available everywhere and with the e-courts and e-filing. They feel that the training on e-courts and e-filing should be expanded and there should be also space for virtual court uh, uh, attending because those who are identified with this court in physical form who come from 10 to 4, there should be facilities for them that either a virtual court, uh, 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 a room for attending to virtual courts with infrastructure. Most of the members feel that the e-courts is being propagated, but there is no Wi-Fi or internet connections in the, uh, either in the complex or in the chamber complexes. So that's what is felt. This is the feedback I wanted to share. The other things is that the cafeteria facility is grossly inadequate in because of the increasing number of lawyers who are coming to the court and also the visitors who are coming in connection with litigation and things like that. In the new block, there is no facilities. The other things is that need for recognition of those people who have not done so well in life, but they have spent their life here. So the 
identity and their worth and dignity should be recognized by one and all by utilizing their talents somehow or the other. Then the space for each one of them, either in the form of cubicles as an interim measure or something, will also give some identity to the lawyers who are spending their time here for the purpose of pursuing the vocation. The main expectations of the bar, as I saw, was from the Honorable Chief Justice, who is a visionary for them, one and all, everybody, he is so loved by everybody. They think that during his time, they will def each one of them will get their recognition and their dignity. That is what their expectation, that's what I thought. The executive committee of the SCBA, on our first interactions, have resolved and committed to a symbiotic relationship with all stakeholders and a supportive role to the Supreme Court administration and to honorable judges. Sir, the honorable Chief Justice, you had said when you assumed charge that you would like to leave the world a better place than what it is today by making some contributions to this. Sir, we promise that we all will be part of it to support you in all your endeavors, sir. And we truly regard, though we all are elected here, we truly regard you as the true leader of our bar. And you know every whatever is needed for the bar. And therefore, without any demand or anything, sir, you will take note of those and intervene in appropriately so that various sections will get some benefit or the other. The trainings should be topmost, the trainings for the professional growth of young lawyers and also not so young lawyers, which should be made institutionalized and a continuous process. So anybody who is willing can get benefit of that. So the second point, which also I thought, and sir, you would agree, is that the mediation should be, sir, first preference should be given to those people who have some spare time in Supreme Court and are not going anywhere. They should be utilized for the purpose of mediation, also for assisting the court in various other matters, depending on the severity of the matter. Sir, we understand that everybody present here including our honorable judges, expect that the Bar Association and the Executive Committee should not forget that they have the prime duty to maintain the dignity and decorum and the traditions of the Supreme Court. And we assure you, sir, that we will not let you down on that, and the committee will definitely the committee will definitely take all precautions in their behavior, in their attitude and working, and will always be mindful of the dignity and reputation of the institution. Now, sir, I'll focus today's main agenda of recounting the contributions So this is an indication enough, sir. <laughs> but this was the first speech, so therefore I had to speak this. So the main agenda is to recount the contributions of three honorable judges who are due to demit office during the vacation. And sir, so today's farewell function is for showing our gratitude to them. Sir, first uh, I would say something about Honorable Justice K.M. Joseph. Sir, Justice Joseph was born on 17th June 
and a day older to Justice Rastogi. Sir Justice Joseph is the son of K. K. Matthew, who was also a Supreme Court judge. Justice Joseph also followed his father's footsteps and studied law at the Government Law College, Ernakulam. He got enrolled as a lawyer in the year 1982. He started his legal practice at the Delhi High Court in civil and writ matters. Later, he shifted his practice to Kerala High Court in 1983 and became a permanent member of Kerala High Court Advocates Association. After practicing for about two decades, Justice Joseph became permanent judge of High Court of Kerala on 14th October 2004. He was sworn in as Chief Justice of Uttaranchal High Court on 31-7-2014. He got elevated as the Judge of Supreme Court on 7th August 2018. Yesterday, when we went to meet Justice Joseph, he clearly told us that the role of lawyers and the bar is not only to focus on the welfare of their members or to earn their vocations, etc. But they have a major role in nation building and also the to protect and emphasize the rule of law. And that is what he believes in and he lives for that. He is rule of law personified. He is of course, from his disposition, as we see in the courts, he is a very calm and patient person. You can make your submissions, and he also formulates propositions and corrects you in your submissions. And what you should also, how you should also present the case, he very often for, makes formulations for you. He is there for social justice and he stands for guarantee of liberty and freedom. He always values the intrinsic value of human lives and the, uh, his, his main concern is that People should work in the national interest and judiciary should not be interfered from any quarters. Sir, from you we have learned the art of patience and to leave what you feel about and to respect the laws and the Constitution. Sir proposes to lead a retired life being in Delhi and Cochin both. And he would like to utilize his time for his love that is music and philosophy. Sir, we'll miss you. In fact, uh, most of the lawyers would pray for matters to be before him so that at least they get a fair hearing throughout. And that we all will miss that, sir. And for your values, we'll remember you, sir, forever. We wish you a very happy retired life. <laughs> Honorable Justice Ajay Rastogi, was born on 18th June 1958. Also followed the footstep of his illustrious father, late Sri Harishan Rastogi, who was an eminent civil lawyer at Rajasthan High Court. Honorable Justice Rastogi took up the law as a career and enrolled in the Rajasthan High Court 
Rajasthan Bar, Bar Council in 1982. He practiced in various fields till he, he was also the bar leader, till he was the bar leader for about 10 years as a senior member. And in 1999, he was the president of the Bar Association of the High Court. And according to Sir, that was the best part of his life. And he also gave us some tips for the elections that if somebody from the group <laughs> wants to contest, <laughs> wants to contest election without taking your consent, that you should ensure that he is defeated. Justice Rastogi was elevated to the bench in 2004. That is 2nd of September 2004. And he had a stellar role in serving as executive chairman of the State Legal Service Authority. And under his stewardship, Rajasthan Legal Service Authority won national award from National Legal Service Authority for three consecutive years. Honorable Justice Rastogi was elevated as Chief Justice of Tripura on 1st March 2018, before which he was the Acting Chief Justice of the Rajasthan High Court for the period from 14th April 2016 to 13th May 2016. In fact, uh, from our experience in the court, Justice Rastogi was a very pragmatic judge and would always try to find a solution to the problem and upfront only propose that this could be there is what is the case all about and would try to give an opportunity to the lawyer to try and demolish what he is saying. He said that this is primarily my mindset. So that he always gives an opportunity. Today's most eminent and literary person who is demitting office is Honorable Mr. Justice Rama Subramanian. Justice Subramanian was born on 30th June 1958. He passed BSc in chemistry from Vivekanand College in Chennai and completed LLB from Madras Law College. Justice Subramanian has made immense contribution to the Tamil language. He has authored a book in Tamil on the principles of law and justice in Kamba Ramayan. He also wrote his series of articles under the caption Beyond Science in a Tamil newspaper for 27 weeks. Justice Ramasubramanian had contributions in adding new vocabulary to Tamil language by running a column in Tamil newspaper by the name Sol Betai for 50 weeks on same lines as Barbara Walruff ran a column for Atlantic Times under the caption, Word Court and Word Fugitives. Many readers of newspaper got involved in this exercise and one of them was serving a life sentence in prison. As a mark of recognition of involvement of life convicts in this exercise, the judge got the life of convict out on parole for the book release function and made the life convict sit on dice with him and receive the first copy of the book. Sir was instrumental in digitization process of the High Court of Madras and many subordinate courts in Tamil Nadu gained a tempo. Sir, being a literary person, after retirement, would love to pursue his passion as an author. 
Sir, we wish you a very happy and relaxed retired life, and we wish your second innings to come true. Sir, with this, I wish everybody a rejuvenating summer break. Thank you very much. May I request Mr. R. Venkat Ramani, learned Attorney General for India, to kindly deliver his address. But I carry thick papers like this does not mean that I'm going to deliver a big lecture. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, today, I, when I have a farewell like this, uh, First thing is you look at the fullness of the audience. And the three honorable judges deserve this packed audience today. And uh, look at that. And uh, in the course of the ceremonial hearing today, just Ram Subramaniam sitting with the Chief Justice, he looked at all of us and said, uh, speak the truth and the truth and nothing but the truth. And uh, he meant it in more than one sense. So meaning thereby that when we assemble in this wonderful evening like this, trying to recollect our beautiful, momentous memories in the court, the exchange of wit and wisdom, knowledge sharing, and all that became made us part of one family. We should be speaking the truth and nothing but the truth, namely, that we are not merely eulogizing judges, but we are looking at truthfulness of the contributions made by them to this great institution. There are two German words. I would like to briefly talk about them. Before that, I say I have a madrasi bias today because I am very close to Justice Rama Subramaniam in more than one sense. Therefore, I would like to boast about my Madrasi bias. Uh, the small book which is written on uh, justice and law in Gamba Ramayanam reflects not only his deep engagement in study of Tamil literature, but to connect literature with the rest of life. And there are so many treasures of literature in our country, in almost all the languages, scanning over, spanning over more than 1,000 to 2,000 years. And many of the gems of literature in various languages reflect the deepest sense of our country's common heritages, and the heritages which are part of the great unifying you know, element of our country's great uh, so I, I think this very small book, but very interesting book. I wish if I have the little time and his permission to translate it into English, to translate Kamba Ramayanam itself is a very difficult task, though it has been translated in many foreign languages, like Valmiki or, or, or Kumara Sambhava or Kalidasa. So I seek his uh, permission, if possible, to translate it into English with some subtitles relevant to contemporaneous administration of justice through the Supreme Court of India. <laughs> now, these two small German words which I have been fascinated. Is that when I wrote uh, the book on Justice Chinnaparetti's judgments under an invitation to the then Chief Justice of India, Justice Venkatramaya, First, an idea, a thought that came that how do you really look at judges and their judgments? The first book I picked up to know about how to write a book on judges and their judgments was an interesting book written by an English academic called uh, Judging Judges by Simon Lee. And interestingly, Justice Michael Kirby, the a judge of the High Court of Australia, internationally well known, and we used to call Justice Krishnair as guru wrote a very interesting piece on Simon Lee's. 
And um, when you look at those genre of literature, we are in the process of not you know, sending our judges away. We're in the process of building more intelligent bonds and more deeper bonds with them when they are physically in the process of leaving us. So we look at every judges from two angles. One, so the one German word called Weltanschauung, very difficult to pronounce German, you know, it's a way, ha, H, and all that, Weltanschauung. The meaning of the word is world view. I mean, every judge has a world view. We are not talking about disposition, predilection. They are a smaller part of a judge's understanding. But a world view comes from your experience, your engagement with the world. And it's a beautiful expression. And the next word which caught my attention was another German word called Zeitgeist, the spirit of the times. So the three and a half or a four year period when these three wonderful judges have been with us, unfortunately minus the lockdown period, which would have been probably given us more time for this, for them and for us. So the spirit of the times is equally important to understand how judges would have the occasion and the opportunity uh, for engagement in deeper values of contributing to the jurisprudence of a country. And uh, the worldview and the spirit of the times as a merger, as an, as an amalgamation. So if only we were to study, like uh, the contributions of judges of the Supreme Court of India, from these two perspectives, and like what happens? And again, comparison with the, with the US Supreme Court, we call it a burger court or a warren court, looking only at the chief justice of the US Supreme Court as a leader of the court, and uh, as if that leadership is, a, is an index of the court's you know, uh, perspectives. But I suppose we may look at the Justice Joseph Court, Justice Rastagi Court, Justice Ram Subramaniam Court, because each one of them had contributed to the court. And we, are, and we need to talk about that. I thought in the afternoon, I just spread all the uh, index and list of judgments of each one of the honorable judges, and said, let me find out if there's any common element I can link. And then also tempted to talk about a few other judgment. Then I thought, no, no, I don't think. Because to tell them what they've written as judgments and to say, yes, we appreciate you is not what they're supposed to be doing today evening. We are here to share our utmost sense of you know, companionship with you, with the three judges who have been with us. Companionship with a very high level of being part of an institution. And that's what I wanted to convey today evening. And um, it will be customary, of course, for us to say how many judgments each judge has been able to pen, what time you had, so on and so forth. Again, a little comparison I find uh, is that on an average, each one of them has scored fairly well, roughly beyond a century and odd. But within a three and a half year to four year period, and with a lot of, as I said, the lockdown, uh, the, the, and very importantly, I find all the three of them had an occasion to engage during the lockdown, the important concern relating to COVID. And during this period, we had concerns in the application of the IBC court. Very, very, very interestingly, I find all the three of them had uh, written about the importance of the court, the COVID-19 relaxations, and how beautifully they've dealt with that. So that is possible because I said a blend of what I call the spirit of the times and their own worldview. Then I, I pay my salutations to all the three honorable judges in my very humble way. And I'm sure the bar which is assembled here will concur with me in saying they have been, in the recent times, the best of our judges. Thank you, sir. May I request Dr. Adi Sagrawala, President of SCB, to kindly deliver his address. These are not four pages, only two pages. <laughs> Honorable Dr. Justice Levi Chanchur, Chief Justice of India. Honorable Mr. Justice K.M. Joseph. 
ऑनरेबल मिस्टर जस्टिस अजय रस्तोगी ऑनरेबल मिस्टर जस्टिस वी रामा सुब्रमण्यम अदर ऑनरेबल जजेज ऑफ सुप्रीम कोर्ट आई एम नॉट मैंशनिंग द नेम्स बिकॉज प्रोटोकॉल वाइज देर कैन बी एनी मिस्टेक लर्न इट एंड देयर फैमिली मेम्बर्स लर्न इट मिस्टर आर वेंकटरमनी अटॉर्नी जनरल ऑफ इंडिया लर्न इट मिस्टर तुषार मेहता सॉलिसिटर जनरल ऑफ इंडिया अदर एडिशनल सॉलिसिटर जनरल्स मिस्टर शिव कुमार पट जोशी वाइस प्रेसिडेंट ऑफ सुप्रीम कोर्ट बार एसोसिएशन मिस्टर रोहित पांडे ऑनरेरी सेक्रेटरी मिस्टर मनीष कुमार दुबे जॉइंट सेक्रेटरी मिस युगान्धरा पवार झा ट्रेसरार एंड मिस्टर अमरेंद्र कुमार सिंह जॉइंट सेक्रेटरी एंड माय सिक्स लर्नेट सीनियर मेंबर्स एंड we are also having the presence of mr p h parikh ji who has been six time president and once he defeated me <laughs> by two votes and mr mr apurva sharma my friend who is having the longest period in public life of lawyers he started his life as secretary of guwahati bar association and today for many years he is the executive chairperson of bar council of india mr manoj misra ji the president of scora and other office bearers of scora and my brothers and sisters in law i find no pleasure in starting my run as president of the supreme court bar association with goodbyes to three remarkable judges of the apex court but i am reminded of the words of mirza galib hame pata hai tum kahin aur ke musafir ho hamara shehar to bas yun hi raste mein aaya tha the three finest judges of honorable supreme court have it in them to contribute much to legal scholarship the task of judging is based on the judges understanding of human life and human interactions my experience is that those who have had the continuous fruitful contact with social problems are able to have a better understanding of the controversies that arise before them that is why we know the philosophy of our honorable judges through their judgments honorable mr justice k m joseph has known no fear as a judge and that is what keeps the faith of the people in every judicial institution he reminds us of the words of the old testament testament that judges shall not be af afraid of the face of the man sir has passed many bold and thought provoking orders mr justice ajay rastogi is a judge with heart and his philosophy is palpable when dealing with social welfare legislations like labor laws his judgments in the field of criminal laws have been equally notable mr justice v rama bala subramaniam has the ability to see legislations with a progressive outlooks which we know through the cryptocurrency judgment and many others in commercial civil laws judgments his lordship has been breaking down complex contractual relationships into simpler proposition for legal testing which makes the phenomenal 
learning to lawyers. All of the honorable judges have made unique contribution to the justice delivery system through their groundbreaking judgments. It is our good fortune that the pyramid is headed by Honorable Dr. Justice D.Y. Chandrachur, who leads by example. Dr. Justice Chandrachur had the difficult task of dealing with an exploding docket in the backdrop of COVID lockdown. But he has answered the challenge and has also ensured that justice is made accessible to the litigant by removing unnecessary complexities and by use of technology. Sir, on behalf of the Supreme Court Bar Association, I extend my full cooperation in your efforts, which will pave the way for more reforms in the justice delivery system. I am assisted by a new team of office bearers who have already extended full support and we will never back down when any assistance is needed from us. Last evening, the office bearers of SCBA had an unofficial meeting with Honorable CGI, and we found that Honorable CGI is ready to accept our genuine demands. We will point out our demands after having discussion in our executive committee. This function is relating to the farewell of our honorable three judges. That's why we are not making any charter of demand. Today, what has been said, that is not official. <laughs> I'm certain that all our demands will be accepted by Honorable Prime Minister and Honorable Chief Justice of India because some of our demands are for the government also. I wish all the very best judge, best of our Honorable Judges, Honorable Mr. Justice K.M. Joseph, Honorable Mr. Justice Ajay Rastogi, and Honorable Mr. Justice V. Rama Subramaniam. <laughs> the bar will continue to see. I'm sorry for that's why <laughs> this mistake is committed not only by our vice president, I have to follow. <laughs> Otherwise, bracketing only one will be injurious. <laughs> the bar will continue to seek their blessings and guidance. Thank you very much. May I request Honorable Dr. Justice D.Y. Chandrachur, Honorable the Chief Justice of India, to kindly deliver his address. My very distinguished and dear colleagues, Justice K.M. Joseph, Justice Ajay Rastogi, Justice Ram Subramanyam, Justice Ram Subramanyam, <laughs> <laughs> my brother and sister judges on the bench, learned Attorney General for India, the learned Solicitor General of India, the President and Vice President of the Supreme Court Bar Association, President of the Supreme Court Advocates on Record Association, members of the bar, very dear family members of our three colleagues, particularly Ms. Ansi Joseph, Ms. Madhulikat Rastogi, and Ms. R. Saraswati. And of course, Justice Joseph's young grandchild, who I'm sure realizes at the age of two, the three, the momentous character of this association. But YouTube, YouTube is always there for the future <laughs> when he grows up. A very good evening to everyone. 
What should I say on an occasion like this? Let me begin by citing and quoting Jalil Manikpuri, who says, Jate ho, jate ho khuda hafiz, haan, itni guzarish hain. Jate ho khuda hafiz, haan, itni guzarish hain. Jab yaad hum aajayen, milne ki dua karna. The lockdown, the period of the lockdown, was marked by the exclusion of the period of limitation. I remember sitting in Justice Bobde's residence, Chief Justice Bobde's residence, and then in the office at Seven Krishnaman and Marg and penning that order on the exclusion of lockdown. But however careful we are as judges, we forgot one thing, the exclusion of time in the tenure of our colleagues on the Supreme Court. Perhaps we forgot to use the Article 142 power on that occasion, which we should have. The audience at the ceremonial court welcome this morning was just a reminder that perhaps we should have excluded the, the time of the pandemic from operating on the tenure of our three distinguished colleagues. We are very often referred to as a polycentric court, polyvocal court because we sit in benches of two and three and we speak our own voices in those benches of two and three. The word polycentric or polyvocal is often used in a, in a slightly critical manner about the Supreme Court because of the tendency to have conflicting opinions. But I've always said, and I, I must say this evening, that our being polyvocal is a sign of our strength because it reflects our diversity as we celebrate the careers of three colleagues drawn from three different parts of the country, each coming with their own experiences, their own learnings, their own spirituality, and having their own messages through their work and their experience. I know it's the last day of the term, and I should be very brief this evening, but I cannot but use this occasion to speak of each of the three colleagues all of whom I know so personally. Just as Joseph and I go back a long way in time, to be precise, our friendship relates to the day 28th of August, 1972, long before either of us were judges or even lawyers. So it's almost 51 years that I know Brother Joseph as a friend. <laughs> We were friends who knocked on each other's doors to invite the other to play a game of football, Delhi's weather permitting. Just as Joseph lived on 11 Tughlaq Road, and I with my parents on 13 Tughlaq Road. In those days when security was not that much of a problem, we would just jump across the wall and go at a little football and play with each other. But I must share a secret when I say that Justice Joseph was quite a football maestro. He taught me various, various tricks in the game of football. We cobbled together our own ragtag football teams every evening and would compete in our own tournaments. Every evening when I passed by the lawns of India Gate on my way home, I remember the days when we played as young children. We played with our football and cricket bats. We would go to India Gate and play a game of football or cricket, depending on the weather. Very often, our parents would have to threaten us to drag us, drag us away from these sporty adventures. But I think the one person who really left an indelible imprint in my mind, and I have to recognize that today, is Joseph's father, Justice K.K. Matthew, who was a personal icon. Just as Matthew was extraordinarily simple, so was Joseph's mother. I don't recall seeing them wear anything but pure white. Joseph's father would be dressed immaculately in a very simple white outfit. Every time that we passed by, he would be on his table, reading his briefs, dictating a judgment, 
or pouring through the la or the or pouring through the law reports. Joseph's mother was extraordinarily simple and affectionate. I had come from Mumbai, where the only version of dosa that I knew was the masala dosa which the Udupi restaurants in Mumbai serve, which is modified to taste the Gujarati taste, so it's sweeter than what you get in, in the South. But in Joseph's house, I learned for the first time that that's not the only type of dosa which you have, because his mother introduced us to idiopums and so many other variations of Kerala cuisine, which she would call us in the evening as young boys when we would be playing in the garden and make us eat, and she would feed us no end. As many of you are no doubt aware, Justice Matthew concurred and wrote several brilliant judgments. My own personal favorites are his judgment in the Ahmedabad St. Xavier's College Society case, which dealt with minority rights of linguistic and religious minorities under Article 30 of the Constitution. Justice Matthew also sowed the seeds of the expanding jurisprudence under Article 12 of the Constitution when he expounded on the meaning of the word state in Sukhdev Singh in Bhagat Ram. Well, this is an occasion to celebrate Justice Joseph. But in celebrating Justice Joseph, how can, I not, how can you not recognize the pedigree from which he comes? of parents who led an extremely simple lifestyle, but who were seeped in the profound living of a simple life of a judge of the Supreme Court. And so much as I see of my colleague now, finds reflection in what I saw in his own parents when we as little children were growing up in their shadows. Justice Joseph had lived in many places besides Delhi. He studied in Chennai and Ernakulam practiced law in Delhi and Kerala, was a judge of the Kerala High Court, then Chief Justice of the Uttarakhand High Court, and eventually elevated as a judge of the Supreme Court. He absorbed much and more from each of these places. And this is immediately evident to anyone who interacts with him. His knowledge on varied subjects shines through, not only on the bench, but also off it. He was an eloquent and persuasive lawyer and is an erudite judge. He is, however, humble, despite his decades-long familiarity with the law and 19 years on the bench, humble to the point of almost being self-effacing. Self he takes his work very seriously. He doesn't take himself very seriously, which is the hallmark of a great judge. After taking over as the Chief Justice of the Uttarakhand High Court, Brother Joseph famously turned up to the Kerala High Court on a bicycle one day. He can often be heard saying that lawyers are perpetual students of the law. He has a reputation for being patient with young advocates and old alike. I've also heard from members of the bar that they look forward to his quips about the cases before him. I fondly recall the time when I shared the bench with Justice Joseph in 2020. If I remember correctly, it was during the second wave of the COVID pandemic when the Supreme Court conducted its proceedings completely through the virtual platform. This was before I had a third screen to communicate with my colleagues while working from home. I would mute the video, pick up the intercom, and discuss the matter with my colleague. However, while I was sharing the bench with Justice Joseph, I did not have to often pick up the intercom to discuss the matter with him. It was because we would know what the other person's view on the matter was, or likely was. The reduced, telephone, the reduced telephone bill during those months is a testament to our friendship that has spent half a century. <laughs> during his tenure at the Supreme Court, Justice Joseph has authored judgments which will hold the field for years to come in fields ranging from commercial to constitutional law. Most recently, he authored the majority opinion of the Constitution bench in Global Mercantile, where it was held that an arbitration agreement is not enforceable if it is contained in an unstamped contract which is exhibitable to stamp duty. Justice Joseph also presided over the Constitution bench, which modified the guidelines for the valid execution of advanced directives, which permit a person to control the mode and manner of their medical treatment, including the point at which they wish for it to be discontinued, allowing them to die with dignity. I could go on and speak for long about his achievements. But let me speak just a few thoughts about the person who is behind it all, 
his gracious spouse, Ansi. Ansi is really spending a lot of time in Kerala with their young family, his daughter and the young grandchild. But I thought that as I conclude this part of my sharing a few thoughts about Joseph, that I should share what truly reflects his love and attachment for Kerala, and which takes me to a beautiful song by John Denver, which is called Country Road. And I think I'll say that. I won't hazard to sing it. But I'll certainly say what he says. And the song says, Country Road, take me home to the place where I belong. And then it goes on to say, and this is too about Kerala, life is old there, older than the trees, younger than the mountains, growing like the breeze. And then for Ansi Joseph, this is perhaps a line which Joseph has in his heart for you. I hear her voice in the morning, how she calls me. I hear her voice in the morning hour, she calls me. The radio reminds me of my home far away. Driving down the road, I get a feeling that I should have been home yesterday. Yesterday. As for Justice Rastogi, I must begin by expressing my gratitude on behalf of the legal fraternity and the nation to Justice Rastogi for his remarkable career of public service and his commitment to the pursuit of justice. Our gratitude extends to the family of Justice Rastogi for supporting and standing by him throughout it all. With his father's legal acumen serving as a compass, the life of law beckoned a young Ajay Rastogi. He began his legal career by establishing his practice at the Rajasthan High Court in 1982, but was soon appointed a standing counsel for the Rajasthan High Court and took on the role of the president of the Rajasthan High Court Bar Association. His illustrious judicial career begins all the way back in 2003 when he was appointed a judge of the Rajasthan High Court. Justice Rastogi's remarkable leadership qualities characterized by his vision and guidance propelled the Rajasthan State Legal Services Authority to, to win the national award for the National Legal Services Authorities for three consecutive years. Demonstrating his leadership, Justice Rastogi briefly assumed the role of an acting chief justice in the Rajasthan High Court for a month in 2016 until he was eventually elevated as chief justice of the High Court of Tripura in March 2018. There, he fostered a culture of teamwork and excellence wherever he went. Justice Rastogi was elevated to the Supreme Court on 2nd of November 18. I got the opportunity to work closely with him during the challenging months of the pandemic in 2020. Despite the difficult circumstances, Ajay's unwavering support made a tremendous difference in navigating the uncertainties of the time. In June 2020, when the Supreme Court was still learning how to operate remotely, Justice Rastogi, Justice Heman Gupta and I decided to do away with paper files. We heard matters and took notes on our laptops. It was perhaps our first attempt at experimenting with a paperless courtroom. Throughout his tenure at the Supreme Court, Justice Rastogi has exemplified the qualities of wisdom and a deep sense of compassion. He has a remarkable hold on service and labor jurisprudence and deals with everyday aspects of law with such felicity. He has always understood that when the Supreme Court addresses service and labor issues, we are not just dealing with abstract legal thoughts. We are dealing with real people. We are dealing with their ability to support their families, pursue their passions, and live fulfilling lives. In 2020, Justice Rastogi and I authored the Ani Nagaraja judgment, in which we held that the policy of the Indian Navy denying women officers who had dedicated their lives to the nation from applying for permanent commissions was discriminatory. In Punjab and Sindh Bank versus Durgesh Kuwar, the matter was a simple dispute which started as a transfer employee of a female bank employee. But we soon recognized that the employee was victimized and her transfer order was in retaliation to her reports about the irregularities in a branch office and allegations of sexual harassment. We quashed the order of transfer and held that it was an act of unfair treatment. Most recently, in Manibe and Maganbhai Bharia was the District Development Officer Dahod, Justice Ristogi sitting with Justice Abhayok 
held at Anganwadi workers and helpers are entitled to benefits under the Payment of Gratuity Act, 18, 1972. The judgment acknowledges the pivotal role played by Anganwadi workers in India's healthcare system and recognizes them as workmen and their legal right to gratuity. In his opinion, Justice Rastogi wrote, the moot question may not only determine the rights of the contesting appellants working as Anganwadi workers or helpers who are discharging a pivotal role in the society at the grassroots level. It may also give a thought process to the legislature to consider as to whether the applicability of gratuity being a social security measure be extended to the employees who serve the establishment in an organized or unorganized sector and in one way or the other contributing in the sustainable development of the nation. So while as Supreme Court judges we decide abstract principles of law, these judgments which touch the lives of common citizens are a reminder, a constant reminder, that the lives of Supreme Court judges are inextricably linked with the lives of our citizens. I truly believe that it is through the lens of such matters that we can gauge the extent to which justice prevails in our society. With each verdict delivered and every precedent set, Justice Rastogi ensured that the values enshrined in our Constitution are upheld and protected. As a mentor, Justice Rastogi has inspired many by his extraordinary willingness to listen and offer wise counsel to others. In his daily interactions with the interns who come into his office, his law clerks, he encouraged them to think like counsel and often asked them to argue a case from both sides, honing their advocacy skills in the process and motivating them to reach their full potential. I had recently requested Justice Rastogi to attend an international conference in Russia with Justice Sanjeev Khanna. Upon his return, Justice Rastogi made sure to bring back treats and chocolates for his entire staff not to speak of the judges as well. Justice Rastogi's remarkable qualities extend beyond his exceptional intellect and hard work as among his friends and family. He is known for his skills as an ace golfer, conquering the greens during the early hours of the weekends. They say that golf is the closest game to the game we call life. Just like he's a master of the greens, Justice Rastogi has also truly mastered his own environment. I'd like to say something about my very dear friend, Ram, Justice Ram Subramaniam. So, the Ram Subramaniam was born in a small town in Tamil Nadu, Manargudi. He did his schooling in Tamil medium. That is where the language of teaching was Tamil. He was exposed to English literature only when he pursued an undergraduate degree in chemistry from Sri Vivekananda College in Madras in Chennai. Given the prolific writer that Justice Ram Subramaniam is, nobody would have guessed that he was not exposed to English literature until his late teens. And I mention this as a message to our young juniors at the bar. Irrespective of the backgrounds from which we come, irrespective of the fact that we have all learned, we have learned in a language medium, judges like Justice Ram Subramaniam furnish a living example that <laughs> Your dreams are for you to pursue. For, as it is said, if your reach is not greater than your grasp, what is heaven meant for? In the initial years of his litigation career, Brother Ram Subramaniam struggled financially like every other young lawyer. The lack of a decent pay for young litigating lawyers has always been a hindrance to professional achievement. I have heard that Ram's mother would give him two rupees and 50 paise every day. He would spend one rupee and 50 paise on travel to and from the court, 75 paise on lunch, and 25 paise on tea. I sometimes tend to exaggerate, but I'm sure on this one I'm absolutely accurate. In more, days, in more ways than one, just as Ram Subramaniam's life and the struggles that he faced to reach the Supreme Court are a testament that there is no substitute for hard work, for it is only hard work and perseverance that will help you reach the pinnacle of success. But above all, Brother Ram Subramaniam is famous for his wit and wordplay. It goes without saying that his presence would lighten up the mood of the room. I'm sure most of you have been at the receiving end of it once when you appeared before him. He uses his sense of humor to motivate young lawyers and ease up the tense atmosphere in a courtroom. 
This seemingly small gesture goes a long way in building up the confidence of young lawyers. A judge brings to the table their expertise on the law. We must not forget that in addition to that, they bring a human touch to the law and the way proceedings in the court are conducted. They leave an everlasting impression on the lawyers, the litigants, and the staff. Brother Ram, I'm sure that you will be remembered for your erudite judgments and your story-like style of writing them. Your landmark judgments, for instance, opening up India to cryptocurrencies and ensuring the application of environmental protection in Kerala's coastal areas uphold constitutional values and compliance with the law. But through your judgments, you have demystified law for the common person. But you will be remembered for much more. You will be remembered for the lasting impact that you have impa imparted on litigants, lawyers, staff, and judicial clerks. You speak through your judgments and actions. This is the legacy that you will leave behind on your retirement. <laughs> Justice Ram Subramanian's love for wordplay and jest comes only second to his passion for Tamil literature. A complaint that I have heard from many judges is that the volume of work they have to undertake does not allow them to pursue their other passions. However, I've always felt that Brother Ram Subramanian has more than 24 hours in a day. He has always been able to manage his time efficiently. Even in his very busy schedule, he has been able to pursue his passion for Tamil literature, Sanskrit, and Carnatic music. He has authored a book on the principles of law and justice in Kamba Ramanayam, Ramayanam, the Tamil version of the Ramayan, authored by the renowned poet. Many of you here would be surprised to know that Brother Ram Subramaniam ran a word search puzzle in a Tamil newspaper for 50 weeks. I'm told that the puzzle was quite popular. A prisoner who was serving a life sentence in Tamil Nadu was one of the many who participated in the exercise. As a mark of the recognition of the efforts of the life convict in participating in the puzzle exercise, Brother Ram Subramaniam handed over the first copy of a compilation of the puzzles to the prisoner at the book release event. I must commend you on all your efforts in ensuring justice through your work inside and outside the courtroom. As I was listening to the speakers before me, I was scrolling on my iPhone, and I went to the WhatsApp messages which Brother Ram Subramaniam has sent me, and they're replete with reference to, to literature, music. For those of you who believe from what has been heard that he's an expert in Karnataka music or Tamil literature, that's far from the truth. Apart from that, I have a series of abhangs he has sent to me by Ranjani Gayatri. And then there is Aigiri Nandini by Maithili Thakur, which is his personal favorite, which is, again, something which I learned from him. I must tell you all that there is only one person in this hall who has the ability to engage with Brother Ram on any topic, be it on law, current affairs, politics, or culture. And that would be his partner, Ms. Saraswati. I'm sure, I'm sure that her worldly knowledge has rubbed off a little bit on him. I hope you enjoy your post-retirement life surrounded by a mountain of books. As I said this morning in the formal court farewell, I've been trying my best for the last several weeks to persuade Ram to accept a post-retirement assignment. But he is not relenting. He wants to be a free bird. In parting, then, I would like to recite the Irish blessing from all of us to my dear friends and colleagues, Justices Joseph, Rastogi, and Ram Subramaniam. The blessing is like this, blessing of a younger brother. May the road rise up to meet you. May the road rise up to meet you. May the wind be always at your back. May the sun shine warm upon your face. The rains fall soft upon your fields. And until we meet again, may God hold you in the palm of his hand. We wish you a healthy and peaceful time ahead. Thank you for your service to our country and its people. Namaskar. Thank you so much, sir, for your lovely words. May I request Honorable Mr. Justice K.M. Joseph 
सुप्रीम कोर्ट जज सुप्रीम कोर्ट ऑफ इंडिया टू डिलीवर इज एड्रेस Chief Justice of India, this is the Nijesh Institute. My learned brothers, uh, this is Ajay Rastogi, and this is V. Ramasundramanian. You got it right. The learned Attorney General, the newly elected uh, President, Secretary, and Vice President of the Supreme Court Bar Association. the learned solicitor general my dear and learned brothers and sisters and last but not the least all my dear friends from the bar and i'll have to go home and therefore my family member my wife and my family members um this is an incredible moment as i said in the courtroom as well something really i am not used to obviously because it's happening for the first time <laughs> because though i have not yet turned 65 i am being turned out of the courtroom by virtue of a constitutional mandate for which there is a uh, no way i can approach with a writ this is a time for ta thanksgiving actually first and foremost i thank god who has uh, stood by me guided me and made this moment come true next <clears throat> i have a problem here with you know what i'm going to say because uh, mm, chief justice and the chief of course is my childhood chum we played football and we also played cricket uh, you didn't mention there is an excellent cricketer yeah, outstanding batsman and now he is batting on the judicial side though so my i have a complaint against uh, chief justice uh, pranjit i really wish he had pursued a career in poetry because if he would have made an excellent poet Uh, when i was just listening to you got such felicity of expression and imagination your play with words i think you'll do it after the time i hope you take it up it's so um, beautiful listening to you you play with uh, your power with words and the next person or persons um, um, i whom i want to thank in this um, moment of thanksgiving is my my parents um <clears throat> i prostrate myself before the sacred memory of my parents um they led by example and i i place this moment at their feet my siblings my elder brother in particular who i still think would have been a better choice uh i mean i wish he had uh, taken a, a choice to follow in my father's footsteps because he would have been a much better lawyer and a judge instead he became an executive in the air india i always complain to him and my elder sister and my brother in law and sister in law have been a, a great source of support to me throughout i remember my revered teachers and friends in school and college my dear friends at the anaclem bar as also all the judges have treated me with a great deal of kindness and su suffered me my arguments or what what whatever it was and uh, i cannot forget the 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 support partly i i must acknowledge was due to the um, deep reservoir of goodwill which my father had had generated and i i do admit that i was it i i received the benefit of it all i remember with a great deal of gratitude chief justice jawarlal gupta who was the chief justice who first thought of uh, 
calling me to become a judge of the Kerala High Court. Uh, but uh, even though the recommendation made by the collegium headed by him, it, it did not take effect immediately. And it was Chief Justice N.K. Sodi who that thereafter reiterated my name. And so it was that, uh, that I began my innings as a judge in the year 2004. And I remember all my colleagues uh, um, who, with whom I had the honor of working. I learned a lot from them as also the members of the very learned bar we have in, in, in the Kerala High Court. And then uh, my stint in uh, Uttarakhand as Chief Justice also taught me a little bit more. And finally, in 2018, August, I made it to this court. Now, this is the highest court of uh, the most populous country now. And it's the most powerful highest court in the world. The judges of the Supreme Court of India are the most overworked judges in the world. Mondays and Fridays are looked upon with disdain and fear and what not, all the negative feelings. I also did, do share uh, the feeling that, you know, they are the most dreaded days for a judge. But at the end of the day, when you have actually worked on a case and found a case frivolous to be thrown out, I think judges are doing a great job because you're actually throwing out, cutting out the weeds, which would otherwise grow and eat up the crops, which are the real cases which the judges should really go on to decide, finally. So the judges are doing a great job on Mondays and Fridays as well, we must remember, when they spend hours on the uh, previous day, and if it's a Friday, it is even worse because the files come up. Monday, Mondays, at least you get two days. It's a tremendous job that the judges are doing. Uh, but here I must acknowledge the assistance which is played, uh, given by the mem members of the bar. Without your assistance, certainly the judges will not be able to uh, do what they are doing not a perfect system, and no institution is perfect, because all, the human beings are not perfect, any institution anywhere in the world, for that matter. The Supreme Court of India, the custodian of the fundamental rights, it has played a dynamic role 70 years down uh, after the, we became a republic, more than 70 years. If you look back, this court, which is a, uh, this court with the assistance of uh, great stalwarts in the bar as well, has made immense, humongous contributions to the world jurisprudence. Supreme Court of India, I think, with the assistance given by the members of the bar, is second to none, I would say. We had for the nation and for the court, we are in, inextricably intertwined. The independence of the Supreme Court is integral to the maintenance of uh, a democratic way of life and the rule of law. It's not very difficult for a nation which is a democracy, having a constitution to slip into chaos, into just the opposite of democracy. So the court, it, the court, as also the bar, must always remain on its toes to guard against it. This is a duty which gets passed on from generation to generation. And if we ignore it, we ignore it at our peril. That which is born must fade out. There is a time to be born and a time to die. There is a time to become a judge and a time to retire. What is timeless, however, for me, is every moment of 
the stint that I've had. I've enjoyed every moment of it. Though, as I said, miscellaneous days were always held in some amount of dread and fear. I have no claims to make. I have a huge debt of gratitude that I don't think I can repay. And I would only end by wishing all of you the very best because you've got huge talent, particularly among the younger members of the bar. And unless and until that talent is realized, our very democracy would be in danger because the members of the bar must be in the forefront of the fight against forces which can overcome the constitutional way of life we have adopted. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, sir. May I request Honorable Mr. Justice Ajay Rastogi, the Supreme Court of India, to kindly deliver his address. Good evening to all. Honorable the Chief Justice of India, Dr. Naranjay Chandrachur, my brother Justice Joseph, my brother Justice V. Rama Subramaniam, my esteemed sister and brother judges, Mr. A. R. Venkat Ramani, London Attorney General of India, Mr. Tushar Mehta, a Solicitor General of India, Mr. Adish C. Agarwala, the President of the Supreme Court Bar Association, Mr. Sukumar Pati Joshi, Vice President of the Supreme Court Bar Association, Mr. Pandey, Mr. Manoj Mishra, the President of SCORA and the members of the Executive Committee, learned senior advocates, members of the Bar, officers of the Registry and staff members, my family members and my all well-wishers, and distinguished guests. Today I feel incredibly grateful and humble as I stand before you. Being a judge in the Supreme Court of India, it is indeed being an honor and privilege. As I approach to the end of my career, so tenure, I want to take this opportunity graciously provided by the Supreme Court Bar Association to share my thoughts and reflect on my time in this esteemed institution. When we say about farewell, only three things emerges to me and which I first convey to myself. Is the day of emotions is the day to express your feelings. And at the same time to remember the each and every moment of, of your working period. It is true that our life is, life is full of exciting surprises and opportunities. If perceived with the right mindset, my life was full of exciting opportunities which I cherish and I was reflecting this morning. The most unique characteristics of time is that it waits for none. It would be right to say the time has taken its recourse and the day has come when I, sta when I stand here to bid this honorable institution my heartfelt goodbye. I'd like to thank all of my dear colleagues and respected senior esteemed members of the bar from my litigation days who have made significant contributions into my professional as well as personal life all over the years. I've spent a considerable part of my career as a part of the, part of the bar and later on the bench. And I thoroughly enjoyed 
every day in this profession. I go flashback and assess my myself with my own introspection. I first accept that God has showered much more than what I have expected myself. I frankly concede in this August house today, when I joined the bar in 1982, I have no even in my dreams that sometime the Chief Justice will call upon me and offer for becoming a judge. And I was very, very happy and content in my profession. And from 1990 to my elevation, uh, being a standing lawyer to the High Court, every Chief Justice, I was in touch with him throughout. Because whenever the opinions are being called, they ask me, Mr. Stoke, give your opinion. What has been done in the matters? When I get, go back to my time, Anil Dev Singh Ji was the uh, Chief Justice in my court. He, through PPS, called upon me that asked Ajay to meet me. I thought he must be calling for some opinion. But I, I was delayed. The PPS again called me, sir, he's waiting, please come. I went to his house. He asked me, what's your age? And call upon me, fill the form and go. I said, sir, let me consult my wife. So I didn't, nothing in my back of mind that for what purpose I've been called. He said, nothing doing, I'll not permit you, please fill the form and then contact everybody members of the family. So my request is that the journey started from professional career coming to become a judge. God was great, great enough giving me opportunity to become a Chief Justice. And coming to this court was never my dream, but it's become true with my good wishes of my all parents, their blessings, and my guru. My guru was Honorable Justice Singhvi, in whose office I work from the day one. And what I am today is all, obviously, like my parents are the first, and my guru will be Justice Singhvi. It is all because of his blessings that I am here today. When I compare my period of profession as a judge, my 22 years of profession, and 19 years as a judge, so my seniority as a profession is higher than my seniority as a judge in 41 years. So what I feel personally is, and I was mentioning in my morning session also, that everybody would say that you are retiring on so-and-so that I have also been called to retire on 17th of June. I know it. But I said, no, I am not going to retire. I'm demitting office from this constitutional office which is given to me. I'm not going to retire. But the unique thing here in Supreme Court, I want to say, and uh, Brother Chandraju will take note of it. In Supreme Court, one thing is very unique. The day you take oath of office, they will give some kind of a sheet and all. The date of retirement will be there. Every document will contain your date of retirement. So they always want to haunt you. Please keep in, keep in alert that what is the next last date you have to leave office. <laughs> you don't find it in high courts. We never find anywhere. Because the person who is coming to this court is well aware. My brothers who have come, everybody is aware what is the last date which I have to demit. But Supreme Court all the time haunt you. No, no, no. Please keep in touch. <laughs> we want to remind you the day you have to leave. Don't go a day further what we have notified to you in the date of your oath, taking oath of office. So that is the way which we work in this court. The, so the members of the bar are concerned. Uh, I have to mind, uh, since I've been a member of the bar for a long time, I think they, achieve, they deserve, to my understanding, in achieving justice, the best important role plays by the bar members. We cannot. We tell you, sometimes we may be harsh, sometimes we may not listen to you the, also. But without the assistance of the members of the bar, 
I do not think it will be possible for judges to decide the cases. And your role is more important than even the judges. You must have read some time, and he also says in some symposium and all, if the bar gives us a f uh, feedback, the material, the whatever the work, work they have undertaken, we only take that particular material for our consideration and passing the judgments. If you are not giving us a full material, it's not possible for us to deliver justice to the people at the earliest. What I realized in, in this five to 10 years, I want to convey to the members of the bar also. And what is my feeling? I'll be wrong. And I must prove to be wrong. If somebody wants to say that I'm an independent judge, unbiased judge, to my understanding, which has come to me, decide the matters anti-establishment. Give your opinion against the government. You are an independent judge. I said no. We as the judges are supposed to decide the matters on the basis of material record, whether it goes this way or that way is not the consideration. But this thing is being perceived by the people at large. And media also supports it. You make a comment against the government, everybody will say happy. Oh, the finest judge. Give judgment against the anti-establishment, finest judge. What this practice is being prevalent and perceived by the people needs a change. I may decide the matter against the government or in favor of the government or against anti, uh, in uh, pro-establishment or anti-establishment. But what we decided, we decided on the basis of the material on record and do justice to the brief. From the day of my profession, we say justice, we are doing justice, do justice with this, relief granted is justice. But I can tell you today from this platform, I have not been able to gather where this term justice lies. Whether I decide in favor of the petitioner who is before the court, justice lies. Whether I decide against him, is the justice lies to the respondents. To my brief understanding, justice is when you hear the matter patiently, give opportunity of hearing to the parties, decide the matters on the basis of evidence and record. That, to my understanding, is the justice. Don't evaluate. To which side the matter has been decided. The media also projects the same. If I decide two judgments in favor of the petitioner, I am the best judge in the Supreme Court. This is being perceived by the people. And if this thing continues more, God knows what will happen. So my request is, please introspect everyone a lawyer, and all of us. And the masses must go that these courts are not concerned who is on the right and who is on the left. This court is only concerned as to who is right among the two. And I'll add it further. When the two persons come to this court, one say one is right and one is wrong, a very difficult, there is no difficulty to us. But when both us say we are right and claim to be right based on their relevant materials on record, here is the issue lies with the court to examine, evaluate, assess, take the law on, on the subject, and then decide the issue as to on evaluation of both the persons who are claiming to be right, who is right amongst the two. That is the role of the judges. And very difficult job. I may tell you, after we being a lawyer and a judge, my experience shows to decide a matter and take a call, very difficult job. But we learn by experience. 
And I can share you, when the day, if I look into my own judgments, which I drafted somewhere in 2006, 2007, with the judgments which I delivered in 2010, which I decided in 2018, or after coming to this court, sometimes I put it, I myself that whether it's my own judgment, which I dictated in 2005. So we, we ourselves, by experience, learn, and maturity as a judge comes later. So this is the way by which the system works. And that is our role, which we always play. And one thing I always say in this court also, and I feel it, a person who can afford a good battery of lawyers, they get indulgence. They get indulgence. But a person who is sitting third in the third row, fourth row, wants to say something, nobody wants to hear him. This court is meant for every citizen, for every grievance, for every complaint which he make to the court. And whosoever knock to the court must be respected, must be given the same indulgence without any dis discrimination among the persons who are approaching to this court. I find sometime in the evening young lawyers making a mention. One day I asked him, why are you not mentioning in the morning? He said, nobody listen us. Nobody listen us, sir. That reminded me. Then I started. In the morning also mentioning, if you have not been able to mention, mention in the evening also. Becoming tired, but I said, no. So what I want to say is, that this court is, the prime duty of this court is to see that the man who is in the last in row must get indulgence as the man who is first in the row. This is what the Supreme Court is and for whom the Supreme Court is meant. <laughs> My request and message to the young lawyers at the bar We always collectively, judges, encourage young lawyers to come forward. Do your best. Argue the cases. Come prepared. But when we put this question to a lawyer, he said, sir, my senior has asked me, don't argue, take only a judgment. Or take pass over. Sometimes I said, your senior has given you advice or request, at least listen us also. And when he are, we are requesting you to argue, why are you not arguing? Sir, my senior is not asking. So he's more concerned about his senior, not of himself. So what I want to say is, please give opportunity to young members of the bar. They deserve it. They deserve it. And I can tell you, I don't, I remember faces, I don't know the names of the young lawyers who appear before us. Tremendous. The potential is unparalleled unparalleled potential available. The young members when argue the cases before us, I find better than the seniors. Better than the seniors, but they are not getting opportunity. But not getting opportunity. So my request to the senior members of the bar is, senior designated is one and senior by profession. Please nurture them, give them opportunity. And I told few seniors also, at least take 10 to 15 young lawyers under your control, within you. Nurture them. Give them a stipend. Tomorrow, they will, when they will be matured in profession, and somebody ask them to which chamber you belong, they will say, I belong to so-and-so chamber. There were chambers earlier. People have been uh, roaming around the condos, ask you from which chamber you are. So I am from Mr. Surabji's chamber. I am from Mr. Nariman's chamber. I am from Mr. P.P. Rao's chamber. That chamber system has completely gone. There's no chamber now. Every, every lawyer putting a band and coming to the court and start practicing. My brother Vishwanathan is here, his senior, 
I, I was looking when he was taking oath of office. You see, he never threw out with the folded hands, only praying. Is it correct? I'm looking forward to him. You see, you can't get a better pleasure that you're the person who, to whom you taught, you nurture. In front of your eyes, he is now adorning to the highest post. There can't be a better pleasure than this. When I came into, when I became a judge, my senior was, I don't know where he was, going to sky. He wanted to touch the sky that time. He could not come, I think, because of his health. So he talked to me. And from one chamber, which I belong, four become judges, four become senior designated lawyers, and every one of them is best placed now. So what my request is, please provide them the best assistance which everybody is expecting from you. I agree with Mr. Uh, Joseph that the Supreme Court has responded to very positive changes in recent times. But much, much more is to be done. And I'm sure under the edges of my brother Justice Chandrachur, he's always remained busy. This institution will go much, much ahead, even than the expectations of the people. And his tireless efforts throughout, throughout, I see. One day I was sitting in some meeting and left at about 8.30. He was there in chamber. I think he was the only one sitting in chamber along with his staff. This kind of a tireless job, my brother just Naranjaya is doing every day. God knows how he's maintaining his health. About putting that much of efforts and labor. To the members of the bar, I express my gratitude for your relentless pursuits of justice and for your invaluable contributions to the legal profession. Your advocacy and legal expertise form the foundation of the robust justice system. As I part with, with my official work, I'm going to miss you so many things from this incredible institution including the morning exchanges that I had with my colleagues over tea before we sat down in the courts. I'm going to miss the satisfaction of being able to do justice for the common citizens. And I have noted one couplet in Hindi, and I like to say, Mujhe hamesha mushkilon se aapka saath yaad rahega. Sahayak ke roop mein aapka haath yaad rahega. इस जगह पर आगे आगे भी होंगे कुछ और महान शख्सियत मुझे भी यहां गुजारा हुआ हर जज्बात याद रहेगा to my personal staff i am indebted to you for your unwavering support dedication and hard work you have been the backbone of my judicial journey i would like to express my gratitude to assist me in performing my duties. I may have been inflexible and tough on certain occasions, but that was with my good intentions. If I have hurt anyone, I tender, I tender my apologies for the same and I will excuse for it. I would like to express my deepest appreciation to my family, my wife, daughters, son-in-law, relatives and friends who have made numerous sacrifices for me and have always been my pillar of strength throughout my career. Your unwavering support, love, and understanding have sustained me during the most challenging times. I am truly blessed to you to have you by my side. I sincerely express my thanks to all of you from the bottom of my heart for support, care, and concern in my entire tenure for en enriching my life. You have been my family. You all have supported me in my professional discharge 
of responsibility and me in my personal life. Lastly, but not the least, it is truly very hard for me to say goodbye. And I'll say only one small couplet here. Mana ki hum har roj yaad nahi aayenge. Mana ki hum har roj yaad nahi aayenge. Lekin aayenge to beshumar aayenge. Thank you once again for this opportunity. And may we all continue to work together in our shared commitments to justice. I hope I was able to contribute to your lives. Thank you very much for giving me the opportunity. Thank you so much, sir, for your concern towards the bar. May I request Honorable Mr. Justice V. Rama Subramanian, the Supreme Court of India, can you deliver his address? Good evening. I don't propose to address everyone in the dais or the off dais because I don't propose to take a roll call. The time is already 6.35. So just a good evening to everyone. The last speaker of the day always has a very unenviable task cut out for him. Because by the time he gets a chance to speak, the audience is half dead. <laughs> Therefore, it is up to him, up to the last speaker, either to pull the audience back to life or to push them to the ventilator. I have succeeded in bringing you back to life. <laughs> the Honorable Chief Justice of India, Dr. Dhananjay Chandrachur, let out several secrets of my life. In fact, Machiavelli says that the moment you ascend to the seat of power, please kill all persons who know your past life. One of the secrets that he let out today was that I owe most of my learning to my wife. <laughs> you know, when my parents told me at a very young age that if you want to be a man of learning, you must have the blessings of the goddess of learning. Who is the goddess of learning? Saraswati. And I, I always believed in shortcuts to success. So instead of going to libraries and acquiring a lot of learning, I thought I will marry Saraswati. <laughs> and they take complete control of it. I was always under the impression that God alone has 1,000 names, Sahasranama, Vishnu Sahasranama, Lalita Sahasranama, Siva Sahasranama. I never knew that I also have Sahasranama. <laughs> because somebody called me Justice Ramaswami. <laughs> somebody called me Justice Subramanyam. Fortunately, nobody called me Subramaniam Swami. <laughs> I don't know whom you are all th thinking about. <laughs> Just as Sanjay Kishan Kaul used to say that People make 1,000 interpretations of a very innocent statement I always make. <laughs> and this is one such innocent statement I made. And I think you have all made a lot of wrong inferences. <laughs> but I was happy because 
at least my name is ram subramaniam when justice narasimha gets a farewell <laughs> i think his first name will definitely be killed by many of you <laughs> i don't unless you are familiar with telugu i do not think anybody will be able to say pamidi gantham <laughs> if anybody can say pamidi gantham narasimha on the date of his retirement right now i announce a reward <laughs> i am a pauper therefore that reward will be given to you as and when you make me earn lot of money in arbitration <laughs> about my past life justice chandrachud said chief justice chandrachud said something i should tell you i did not have the disadvantages that justice joseph and justice ajay rastogi had justice joseph had the disadvantage of being the son of an illustrious supreme court judge i did not have the disadvantage <laughs> justice ajay rastogi had the disadvantage of being the son of a great civil lawyer i did not have the disadvantage therefore if you are a first generation lawyer i think you always stand at an advantageous position you have nothing to lose <laughs> the second advantage that i have today is that i am also the last generation lawyer my children did not choose law yesterday in a private conversation some of the advocates asked me why your children did not choose law i told them that the reason is simple both of them want to be law abiding <laughs> chief justice chandrachud talked about the great contributions made by justice k k matthew the greatest contribution made by Ch justice k k matthew He is Justice K M Joseph, and not the judgments. <laughs> in the in the Aranya Parva of Vana Parva of the Mahabharat, there is a very famous dialogue between Yaksha and Yudhishthir. It's called Yaksha Prashna. One of the questions that Yaksha asks Yudhishthir. is this ko modate kim ascharya kaha pantaha kacha vartika mamaitam chaturah prashnam kathayitva jalam pisha who is happy what is so surprising in this world kim ascharya kaha yudhishthir replies अहन्यहनिभूतानि गच्छन्तीह यमालयम् सोशाशा स्थावरमिष्यन्ति किम् आश्चर्यमतः परम् सी ऑल ऑफ देम कोटेड फ्रॉम हिंदी पोइट्स आई डोंट नो हिंदी आई वाज आल्सो क्लैपिंग व्हेन यू ऑल ऑफ यू क्लैप्ड दोस कपलेट्स द आर्ट ऑफ क्लैपिंग at the time when you did not understanding i developed by watching english movies <laughs> because during college days for the sake of taking pride that i have also watched movies i used to go to movies whenever there were jokes other people will laugh it is only therefore i laughed not because i understood anything so the reply of yudhishthir was ahanyahani bhutani gachanti hayamalayam सोषाह स्थावर मिश्चंती कि आश्चर्य मत परम द मीनिंग ऑफ दिस वर्स इज डे आफ्टर डे काउंटलेस क्रीचर्स आर गोइंग टू दि अबोर्ड ऑफ यमा यट दोस दट रिमाइन बिहाइंड बिलीव दम सेल टू बी ए मॉर्टल वाट कैन बी मोर सरप्राइजिंग दैन दिस इन फैक्ट if there is an imaginary conversation between yaksha and me and if yaksha asks me 
what is surprising in the world my reply would be day after day judges retire <laughs> all of them are praised uniformly at the time of their farewell with the same epithets could there be anything more surprising than this oh yaksha will be my reply <laughs> but as i said in the morning i have never been surprised by the speakers on such occasions showering great praises on the persons who are departing because our shastra says all hostilities end with death <laughs> joseph story who served as the associate justice of the american supreme court said way back in 1829 i quote i will not say with lord hale that the law will admit of no avail no rival and nothing to go even with it but i will say that it is a jealous mistress and requires a long and constant courtship it is not to be won by trifling favors but by a lavish homage i unquote it has been 40 years since my courtship with law began and i do not know if i have won it by lavish homage but now the time has come to break this relationship to break this courtship not on the ground of irretrievable breakdown using article 142 but on the ground that i have other mistresses too <laughs> namely hold your breath namely tamil literature mythology spirituality mysticism astrology classical music all of you are welcome though i have paid occasional visits to these mistresses in the past i have not done justice to them so far therefore i look at my retirement with a lot of excitement as i propose to have courtship with my other mistresses of course in the company of my dear wife <laughs> the tempest all of you know was the last play written by shakespeare it is the story of prospero the duke of milan who is driven out of dukedom he lands up in a distant island where he becomes skilled in magical magic arts with which he takes revenge on his enemies eventually he forgives all of them and the tempest play ends with a note of celebration forgiveness and harmony towards the end of the play prospero gives a farewell address in fact it is not merely a farewell address by the principal character of the play but also a farewell address by shakespeare himself because tempest happened to be the last play written by shakespeare so in an imaginary farewell address by a magician shakespeare addresses the audience prospero the duke turned magician says in his farewell i quote our revels are now ended these our actors as i foretold you were all spirits and are melted into air into thin air and like the bestest fabric of this vision the cloud capped towers the gorgeous palaces the solemn temples the great globe itself yeah all which it inherit shall dissolve and like this insubstantial pageant faded leave not a rag behind we are such stuff as dreams are made on and our little life is rounded with a sleep i unquote i thought that this could fit very well into the theme of my song today in response to the nice words that fell from the lips of everyone here in a way as i i considered myself and i also i was considered by some at the bar and the bench to be a magician therefore i thought that magician's farewell that 
Shakespeare penned in the Tempest would be appropriate for me to bid adieu to you. So today, I catch up with those who retired yesterday. Mind all of you, my brothers and sisters, you will also catch up with me tomorrow. <laughs> with these few words, I thank every one of you. I thank the family members who have all assembled here. My wife, my daughter, my uh, son-in-law, my son should be watching it after it is uploaded in the YouTube. I used to tell them, they don't listen to me, but they now listen to me in YouTube. Thank you very much. Lord Sip, I'm very sure after listening to you, nobody is tired. <laughs> Yes. May I request Dr. Adi Sagarwala, President SCBA, Mr. Sukumar Parjoshi, Vice President SCBA, and senior members of the Executive Committee to present a memento on behalf of the bar to Honorable Mr. Justice K.M. Joseph. I again request to present a memento to Honorable Mr. Justice Ajay Rastogi. I again request to present a memento to Honorable Mr. Justice V. Rama Subramanian. Now, may I request Mr. Minesh Dubey, Joint Secretary SCB, to deliver the vote of thanks. Thank you, Rohit. We are grateful to Honorable Dr. Justice D.Y. Chanchur, the Chief Justice of India, for accepting our invitation for presiding over this function. We thank Honorable Mr. Justice K.M. Joseph, Honorable Mr. Justice Ajay Rastogi and Honorable Mr. Justice V. Ram Subramanian, Judges Supreme Court of India and their family members for accepting our invitation to attend this function. We thank Honorable Judges of the Supreme Court of India. We also thank Mr. R. Venkatramani, London Attorney General for India, Mr. Tusar Mehta, London Solicitor General of India and Law Officers, Senior Members and Members of the Bar. Mr. Manoj Misra, President of SCORA, Mr. Sachin Sarma, Joint Azar SCORA. We also thank Mr. Atul Kurekar, Leonard Secretary General, and Mr. P.H. Parekh, former President of SCBA, and former Secretary Mr. K.C. Kosek and Mr. Rahul Kosek, and other registrar and Supreme Court, uh, and other registrars and the staff of Supreme Court Bar Association. We also thank press, journalists, print, and electronic media, office bidders, and members of the executive committee of different bar associations, other distinguished guests, 
and respected members of the bar for gracing this occasion. I request the members of the executive committee to join the group photograph. Can you join us for Haiti? Is this yours?